Okay, there it goes. All right. So as I said, quit is on Monday. I don't have to write this down again. Uh, let's start off with something. Uh, there were some comments about, uh, some very helpful comments about, maybe there was some confusion about this inverse tangent thing. So let me just uh, make sure everybody understands what I was saying. Suppose you had a problem like uh, the vector a x to the x component is minus 5, and then the y component is, let's say, 8.66, right? And, and now you know that there's this formula. If I measure the angle counterclockwise from the x-axis, I can use the formula that the angle, let's call it theta, is equal to the inverse tangent or the arc tangent of a y over a x. This formula will work. So this is measured counterclockwise. from the positive x-axis. All right, so now what I'll do is I will take my calculator and then do uh, 8.66 over five, negative 5. So let's do that. Uh, inverse tangent, 8.66 divided by negative 5. And then I get minus 60 degrees. and if, if that's all I'm going to do, I will get the answer wrong because that's not the right angle. Okay. One thing I should mention is if your calculator is like my calculator, it will only give you a number uh, between negative 180 and positive 180. It, it sort of it, it maps everything to the first and the fourth quadrant. It's nothing about the second or third quadrant. This answer is actually in the second and third quadrant. So if you if you forget what I mean by quadrants, so uh, x plus y. This is the first quadrant. This is what's called the second. This is what's called the third quadrant. This is what's called the fourth. And your, if your calculator is like mine, it only gives the angle in the first and fourth quadrants. Okay? But to figure out what this angle is, you need to draw uh, a sketch. It doesn't need to be a perfect sketch, but you just notice that the ax is negative 5, so it's going in this direction. So you have negative 5. And the ay is positive 8.66, so it's somewhere up here. Okay, so it looks kind of like this, 0.66. And so I'm going now from the origin to the tip here, and that's my vector A. Okay, whereas negative 60, that would be pointing in this direction. Everybody see that? It would be pointing in this direction. All right? That's not the vector. It's actually an 8, 180 degrees plus negative 60. Everybody got that? Okay. So the, this angle here, which I'll call theta, it should be 120 degrees, this angle here. This is, okay, and the way I would get that is I would just add 180 to this to give me the 120 degrees. Any questions about that? Okay, yeah, so, so it, it, yeah, there's, there's this sort of language as well, especially if you're not a native uh, English speaker, this might be confusing. So uh, when we think of uh, directions, so if I'm thinking in terms of north is up, so usually we like to make the map so the north is pointing up, then the east will be pointing in the x direction, and then the south would be here, and then uh, west would be on here. So if they have the word something like uh, 20 degrees uh, north of east, the key word is... First of all, it's the last word that's the starting point. That might be a little bit confusing. So if they say north of east, first you take east. And then you take the first word and you say you, you, you tilt or you turn in the direction of that second direction. Okay? So I start from east and I tilt to the north. So that would be an angle like this. It would be 20 degrees north of east. So this is 20 degrees. Okay? Everybody good on that? So if this was... Okay, so if I'm describing this angle, or this vector here, then this angle turns out to be 30 degrees. So I could say, if I'm using the same north and west and all that stuff, I would say it's 30 degrees west of north. Does everybody get that? Okay. So the, the funny thing is, it's the second word that's the starting point, it's the, third, the first word that describes how you tilt away from it. Kind of like when you talk about colors, you say yellowish green. It's mostly green, but you tilt a little bit more yellow. Okay. Alright. Other questions? No? 
it was going on. Um, there was some stuff I, I wanted to cover last time that had a quadratic equation that I didn't get a chance to cover. Let's do this. Um, let's do this together. This won't be a quicker question because it's a bit difficult. I don't want to uh, do it that way. Let's say a ball is thrown straight up in the air. So we're going to neglect air resistance. I won't write it out explicitly. With speed. Four meters, four point zero meters per second, from a height of three point zero meters above level ground. Okay. The question is, how long does the ball stay? in the air, okay, before hitting the ground. Now it's implied. All right. Okay, so let's take inventory of what we know. So positive y direction is going straight up. So let's see, the initial velocity so everything is a y direction, so I'm not going to bother writing y's components. So, uh, v0, it's positive 4.0 meters per second. Okay, Positive because I'm taking positive uh, plus y to be in the up direction, and it's going in the up direction. All right, now the acceleration, ay, this is going to be, okay, let me put the y here just to remind you it's not in the x direction. It's negative 9.80 meters per second squared. By the way, um, for those of you who are bothered by little things like, like this, uh, let me mention uh, the, uh, on your quiz, uh, the quiz is produced by this the software package that uses, uh, it, it doesn't matter what it's called, but, but uh, it, it, it's programmed with uh, e to be negative 9.81 rather than 9. 9.80. So if you get an answer that's off by like half a percent, don't don't like pull your hair out because you can't get that. Okay? The, it, 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 just this round is reason that you did so be fine. The funny thing is, like on the track, you may have noticed on the practice test, there was sort of like a, a too many significant digits on some of the answers. Have you looked at the practice? Not the practice test, the practice quiz. Yeah, it, it, your, your, your real place has this, this issue as well. Um, it, it has more significant digits than it's supposed to have, but I'm told uh, that's just the way the software was written. We would have to reprogram the whole thing otherwise. Um, and that's, so we just left it. Okay. Uh, if, if you don't know what I'm talking about, let me see. Kind of like this. Like, here's one of your practice quiz problems. You notice there's a lot of significant digits here. 220.081. There's only three significant digits in the problem. Okay, Your quiz is going to be a bit like this. So don't let that bother you. For some people, they kind of like that because they'll punch in exactly the numbers they have in the problem and they'll get six digits perfectly with the multiple choice answer and they're really confident. Okay, AY is uh, 9.8, uh, and the difference between, uh, so the displacement, yeah, let me add, this is slightly tricky. So what is Y minus Y0 going to be in this problem? Negative 3. Yeah, is everybody going to get this negative 3? You start 3 meters, well, 3 meters is more like here, 3 meters above the ground, you throw the ball, but it's going to end on the ground. So the final minus initial, so the final is below the initial, so I'll get negative 3. So negative 3 meters, what do we want? We want delta t. Okay, so now we're going to look for an equation that involves these 
things and nothing else. And so, which one is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the t squared one. Exactly right. Okay. All right, so we're going to say, uh, so let me write, well, let me write it this way. Let me put the y minus y naught on this side, and then I'll put the other stuff here. One half ay delta t squared plus v zero delta t. Okay? All right. Now let's plug in all the, uh, all the numbers. I won't put in the, the units because it's going to get a little bit messy. So I have negative 9.8, then I have delta t squared, then I have v0, which is 4.0 4. times delta t, and then y minus y0 is negative 3.0. Okay, now at this point it looks like we're going to have to solve a quadratic equation. So the way we do the quadratic equation, usually you put zero, you have zero on one side and the rest of the stuff on the left-hand side. And I'll simplify some things. One half of 9.8 is negative 4.9 delta t squared. Okay. And then I have 4.0 times delta t. And then I have plus 3.0 is equal to zero. Okay. Any questions about this? Okay, so now let's remember our quadratic equation. It's on your um, it's on your formula sheet for the quiz. But remember the quadratic equation. All right. It's uh, if I have a x squared plus b x plus c is equal to zero, then x is equal to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a all uh, in the, in the 2a in the denominator. Okay. Everybody's good with that? Okay. So <clears throat> we'll get to actually two solutions, but we'll, we can figure out which solution we actually care about. One of them will be a different kind of a solution. So Delta T. So this is my A, this is my B, this is my C. Okay? So I'll have minus B, so that's negative 4, plus or minus the square root of B squared, which is 4 squared, minus 4AC, 4 times A, which is negative 4.9, times C, which is 3.0, divided by 2 times A, which is negative 4.9. And I will end up, oops, thank you. And then I will end up with answer 1.3 seconds or negative 0.47 seconds. Okay, so which one looks better here? This one or that one? 1.3? Okay, okay, right. that's the right answer. Then, then what the heck is this answer? What, we just solved the equation. I got negative 0.47. Yes, you can put that in. Yeah. The other side of the parabola. Yeah, exactly right. So, in other words, what this, okay, so there's a parabola. The parabola is, you know, something like, you can probably reflect that somewhere like y is equal to x squared. If you think about the plot of y versus time, it forms a parabola. It goes up and it goes down. It makes up a pi versus time. You sort of see this parabola arc back lecture on Tuesday will be all about parabolas because parabolas are, okay, since I'm not in class, I need to do now. So next week after the quiz, the first thing we'll talk about is the trajectory of this eraser. Okay? So you throw something at a given angle and it forms a parabola. Right? And, uh, but anyways, so we have this nice parabola and we figure out the time where it actually hits the ground. But if you go to the, if you reverse the time backwards before the starting point, there's another point in the problem where it also hits the ground. So it's like running the movie backwards, assuming it's still a problem. Okay? 
So that's why you get to build ANC. Questions about this? But that's not what we want, because that's not really what happened. All right, let's go on. There was another problem I wanted to do. Let's do this together as well. Let's say a hiker walks 12 kilometers due east, that means exactly east, then uh, six kilometers uh, due north, and then two points, yeah, 2.0 kilometers, that is right, that's the right number, 2.0 kilometers due west. Question is, how far is the hiker from our starting point? All right, so now it's just a matter of drawing things out and then doing some triangles. Okay, so we have north is up. North. So let's call this positive y. And then we have, let's say this is east. And then obviously the other direction is west. So let's call this positive x. Right. And okay, while we're at it, south is this way, obviously. Okay, uh, we have starting here, we start here. We the, the hiker goes 12 kilometers. Up, oh, thank you. Here. The hiker goes 12 kilometers east. And then after the 12 kilometers east, what happens is the hiker goes 6 due north. Go to 6 north. And then the hiker goes 2 kilometers due west. And ends up there. And we want to know how far has the hiker traveled from the starting point. This is the starting point, so I'm going to draw the vector from the initial to the final point. And that will be my vector, let's just call it D, for displacement. Okay, so we need to know the length of D. We can do this using triangles, so we'll draw this right triangle here. So this side we know is 6. All right. Now we need the other side here, so we need this length, so this length is already 6, we, we know that. So this length will be, how much will it be? Yeah, because the whole thing was 12, this is 2, subtract 10, uh, 12 minus 2, you get 10 kilometers. All right, so if I want to simplify the drawing now, I have my D, I have 6 kilometers, I have 10 kilometers, and this is D. And to get the magnitude, so in other words, dx is 10 kilometers, dy is 6 kilometers. To get the magnitude of d, I get the square root of the sum of the squares, dx squared plus dy squared. And that comes out to, okay, so I will have 10 squared plus 6 squared. So the square root of 136. That's about a little bit less than 12, so 11, it's actually about 11.7 kilometers. Okay. Any questions about this? Okay. Now, um, right. So the next thing I want to do, uh, since this is the last class one before the quiz, you may have people have questions about the practice quiz. Good. 
How many people have started looking at the practice, please? Uh, yeah, you're, you're snagging uh, Okay. All right. <laughs> All right, then I might not do too much of the practice quiz. What I will do is I will um, try to defang one of the problems which might cause a lot of heartache um, or maybe stomach ache. Uh, let's, uh, let's see if I can. Let's talk about this problem. It's this uh, second problem. Um, let's see if we can get it without my solutions written all over the top of it. Just take a look. Now, let me zoom it in. Okay. All right. Um, so a car is moving along the x-axis, and its velocity vx varies with time, as shown in the figure. What is the displacement of the car from t equals one to t equals eight seconds in meters? All right. The thing about this problem is it's kind of rough for non-physics reasons. And the main thing is that there are points on this curve which you have to figure out where the heck they are. Um, okay. But uh, so let me go through this so you don't spend the whole weekend struggling with this problem and stressing out over the place. Okay. So maybe somebody, can somebody tell me what the basic strategy is here. Integrate each linear portion and then add it. Yeah, so, so you, you do integrals and just put them all together. Okay. However many reasons we have. Okay, now, so remember that the displacement is the integral under the curve. If the curve, this is velocity versus time, so we have to integrate. Now, if it's above the curve, it's positive. Or, sorry, if it's above zero, it's positive. The area, is, it's assigned to area. If it's below zero, then it's negative. Okay. So it's a little tricky because they're asking from 1, which is this annoying point in the middle here. Uh, you have to figure out where this point is. You have to know where that is. So they're asking from here. And then they're going to time 8. So they're going yeah, to time 8 here. And then I just told you that uh, having positive or negative makes a difference, so this, this is the zero line here. Okay, so you kind of have to know where this is, where, where this is. Yeah. Oh yeah, you can write your heart's delight on the place. You can write on the place. Now, um, there is uh, another strategy you can use, but I, I think most of you might not remember how to do this. Another way to do the problem is you can write down the equation for the two lines. You don't want to do that in terms of like y equals seven the slope of the line. Yeah. If you know how to do that, this, this is, that's a slightly faster way of doing this problem. But I, I'm assuming most of you don't remember how to do that and probably couldn't do that on the quiz. Okay. So the, the main thing I wanted to do was to tell you not to worry too much about this problem. Don't spend your your entire um, I, I forgot I had this thing sticking out the whole time, sorry. Um, the, don't spend your entire weekend working on this problem because it's not supposed to be representative of, of what we want you to know. Okay? So the problem is very difficult. The key point is you should get that the displacement is the time integral under the velocity versus time curve. Okay. So what you need to do is um, you need to break it up. So you have 
this is time t equals 1. This is the end time t equals 8 seconds. So you have this region here. That's the first triangle. And that gives you an area from the triangle. It is one half the base of the triangle times the height, h1. Okay. Then you need the second triangle, which is this triangle here. Okay. And that triangle is the, it's negative, has a negative sign because it's below the below zero. And now you need to know how long this is. Well, basically you need to know the entire base of the triangle, but you might break it up into two pieces, b2 and b2 prime there. And then multiply by the height. And then if you then you use one half base times height. That's the area of that triangle. Okay. And then you need to know the height of this triangle and the base of this triangle. So you have one half uh, b3 h3. Okay. Any questions about that? Yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah. You mean why do we have to split it up? Why do we have to do like? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's where the the, the the sentence is not exactly precise. It's the signed area from the curve to the zero line. It's actually not necessarily under. It's under when it's above. But but the, the wording. Yeah, you remember the sentence, but it's not exactly right. Okay. It's whatever's between the curve and the zero line. Okay, so anyways, the way you do this problem is you have these three triangles with these three areas, and then triangle one and triangle three are above zero, while triangle two is below zero. Okay. And then delta x is equal to <coughs> the displacement will be positive for the first one, negative for the second one, positive for the third one. Everybody good on that? Okay. I won't spend the time going through the, it's not point is it's not that important, but the rest of the problem is, is to use similar triangles to determine what all these things are. Okay? But, but the thing is, uh, sim the concept of similar triangles is something you should know. So let me just show you one of them so that you don't just ignore the whole concept of similar triangles. I, I don't want you to come up with the impression that similar triangles is something you should forget about. Okay? So, if you have a similar triangle like this, right? Similar triangles are two triangles that have the same angles. So here is a right triangle. They share the same angle here. Okay. So one equation you can write down, for example, in order to solve for h1, it turns out to be 25 minus h1. Don't let that bother you. But this <coughs> side of this triangle, I write it here, over this side of the triangle, so this leg over this leg, and I have a similar triangle here, this leg, which is the vertical over the horizontal, over 5, and that's what you can use to solve for h1. Okay. Everybody write down similar triangles? Uh, okay, I said I wasn't going to go through the details, but since you asked the question, now you're going to get some details. Okay? <laughs> right, because here, this, this, um, uh, the point is there's a 25 here, okay, and there's a 10 here. The whole length of this triangle, of the big triangle, is 35. There's 10 here, and this will, this side is, this is going to be 25, and so this will be 25 minus this piece, h1, okay? So, so that's how you get all that. But the thing is, the problem is a bit difficult. You have to do this kind of gymnastics to do it. So, so don't worry about that. Work, work on the, the other problems. Let's, let's however, uh, do one of the problems. Yeah, let's do one of the practice test problems to show you that it's, uh, it's actually, uh, it's a good practice test, except for that one problem. <laughs> let's do this one. All right, that's just, this one doesn't, yeah, it's hard to fit this thing on the screen. Uh, how am I going to have to zoom out this way? Let's do this. Uh, yeah. Okay, so answer E will be none of these, okay? And so I'm going to just try to get A, B, C, D to fit. 
And um, let's refocus it. Okay, I know that I know it's a little hard to see. It's very hard to see, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so what I will do is I will make a blow up of this, this guy. It's going, well, the blow up will not be that much better resolution, will it? <laughs> okay, all right. Um, how can I do this? Yeah. You can see the line. You can see the line. Okay, all right, all right. You're just going to have to wing it, all right? Okay, so I'll tell you what this is a graph of. This is a graph of the velocity versus time. So at least I can write this out. Time here, and this is the velocity. And so we have this graph. You have a straight line first, then you have a flat line, and then you have a thing that dips down with a straight line and it goes up with a straight line, okay? And the question is, uh, find a corresponding graph in the list that could represent the position. So this is y of t versus time. So t obviously being time. y of t, y of t, y of t. So this is the vy component. All right? And e is none of these. Oops, the crack in the table right here. None of these. All right, let's do this as a clicker question. We have to do at least one quick question today since we're not going to do any of them next week. Okay. Yeah, this is this is A, B, C, D, and then E is not a B. Yeah, if you can't read it, oh no, sorry. Uh, these, this is zero. Oh. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, you can't see that. And then can you put the line through it on the velocity graph? Oh, okay. Wow. All right. So sorry. Having the, the big column doesn't work well for this. Okay, change your answer if you need to. Multiple choice tests, you can get the 
answer right, even though you don't know anything about the right answer, right? You can just eliminate the wrong answer. Just go through one by one and figure out why they're wrong. Until you're left with one that you can't figure out why it would be wrong. Let's see what people have said. All right, ten, nine. I'll give you five more seconds. All right. Okay. Now, oops, I didn't see what that said. All right. So there's D's and some A's and E's and D. Okay. So it's a bit spread. All right. Now, one thing. So when I when we talk about integral of the velocity, what is the the time integral of the velocity? Displacement. What's the difference between position and displacement? Yeah. Displacement is a tangent position. Okay. So maybe some of you were confused because the position, that we were applying position and you were thinking displacement and you were thinking it should have been positive mm -hmm. in the beginning or something like that. Okay. That may have been something that confused you. Let's go over it. Oops. Okay, this time I can zoom in. Okay, the way I approach this problem is I just figure out what's going on in each stage here, okay? So we have a plot of, of the, uh, the first part here. The velocity is increasing linearly with time, so the acceleration is positive. In fact, it's constant. Well, but it's positive. Here, the velocity is just a, it's a positive value. It's constant with time. Okay. And then the velocity is decreasing. So that means the acceleration is negative. And here, it reverses its trend, and the acceleration is positive. So I need positive acceleration, constant velocity, which is positive, then a negative acceleration, positive acceleration. Now, this is just, this is a crazy one. This has no acceleration, right? This is just, it's just, uh, it's just, okay, it's, it's like jumping all over the place, right? That would be the position. I mean, just think about what this is saying. It, it's here, and then all of a sudden it's there, and then all of a sudden it's there, and then it's over there. Okay? That's not what's going on. There's not this really rapid acceleration and stopping, okay? Everybody good on that? Yeah, tell us what to do, something like that. So if I were to plot, I mean, one way to think about this is what, yeah. Sorry. Oh, okay, so yeah, yeah, that's another way to think about it. it uh, if you are, uh, yeah, if, if you're trying to think about, by the way, I should tell you all these things, but you, if, you're, if you get involved in test writing, you can figure out all the wrong answers students can make, and then some of those wrong answers will show up. And, Sort of unlock probably what this is. You took the you part of the acceleration of this velocity graph. That's what it would look like, but not the position. If you took the derivative, then you would get positive number. Then you get zero, and then you get negative, and then you get positive. And yeah, that's perfectly the acceleration you would get. Okay. Now, <clears throat> so this is okay. This one. Uh, could be it, but, but let's just analyze that this one is, is no good either because it has the same sort of 
features as this guy. It's there. It's one position. Then it jumps to another position. Jumps to another position. It doesn't have this constant velocity part. It doesn't have this constant uh, acceleration part. It doesn't have any of them. Okay. But now let's 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 look carefully at what's what's going on with uh, let's say d first because I, I want to show you the right one. It's a little bit easier to to see that it's right than to figure out the wrong one's wrong. Okay. So first of all, we have this curving up. So the slope is increasing. That's the characteristic of positive acceleration. Okay. It has this bending up. That's what, uh, sorry, like this, bending up. And that's what the uh, positive acceleration, when you have positive acceleration, you plot the position versus time, it looks like this, like uh, a quadratic function, x, uh, something squared, t squared. And then in the middle, in this region here, that's where I said there's constant velocity, so it should have a constant positive slope. Okay? And so it's doing the right thing, and you can compare it with this guy here. In this region, this guy is bending downwards, so it's accelerating neg in the negative direction. It's falling down. Okay? And this also has a negative constant velocity, so that's why this guy is looking more promising than any of the others. In this region here, the it's because it's it's bending. It was going up, but it starts to bend over. That's the typical negative acceleration. Okay. So, so the way I think about it is what's going on with the slope. It was pointing up, then it tops off, and then it turns down. So it's always tilting that way. So that's negative acceleration. And then in this region here, it bends the other way. It's going. The slope is going this way, but then it bends this way, and it goes up. Right? Any questions about that? So when you're thinking about acceleration, you, and you have a curve of, uh, of let's say, y, it's, it's all about if you put your pen tangent to the curve, whether it's tilting up or it's, it's, it's tilting down, OK, the trend. Any questions about that? All right, if not. Study hard for the quiz, make me proud, do well. Okay.